Today we're going to talk about the best sports car you can get for $60,000. We're going to stay towards relatively newer vehicles, but also encompass some um, used certified pre-owned ones that you can get for that kind of money. We're also going to try to stay to as close to $60,000 as possible, ignoring all the people that would say, oh, I'm going to spend $20,000 on this and then spend forty dollars building it up, blah, blah, blah. That's not as relevant. For the sake of organization, we'll kind of group them by countries. We'll start off with the European, so Germany, and then some of the other smaller manufacturers. Then we'll go over to the Americans, and we'll wrap them up with the Japanese. So first of all, Germany. We'll start, let's say, with Audi. So if you're looking for a sports car for 60 grand in Audi, if you look brand new, there's a couple of options. You've got something like a TT, TTRS, uh, the new S5. You can go a used RS5, and those three examples are good. If you're looking for something all-wheel drive, Audi, obviously, with Quattro, can check those boxes right there, but they don't seem as exciting to me as I want them to be. A uh, used RS5 is all right, but I think there's, for the money, more dynamic and exciting uh, vehicles out there. One thing that I have heard some people mention is a used R8 V8, which you can get one for right around $60,000, but I would seriously advise against that because a R8 with... That many, that for that amount of money has a lot, a lot of miles, easily over 50,000 miles. The maintenance costs are going to be a lot higher than some of the other things. It's going to be an older vehicle, but again, it will be more exotic. It is an R8 and everything, uh, but I don't know if I would go for that one. If we move on to BMW, BMW has a couple of good choices. The M4 definitely has come down to that price point. It's a great car. The latest updated of the M3, M4 iteration, that straight six, it makes very strong power. I personally really do like the styling. looks very modern, a lot more angular and sharp. The My complaint with that is it doesn't sound as good anymore, and I actually think the M3 looks better. Um, I'd miss the naturally aspirated high-revving V8 from the E90 generation vehicles. Another option if you want to go a little bit more bigger, it's kind of stretching the sports car name, but an M6, uh, M6 Coupe with that twin turbo V8 makes a lot of horsepower. But that's more of a luxury kind of GT thing. I don't know if you'd really consider a sports car, but it's still a really, really cool uh, vehicle for that money from BMW. I think the best BMW you could pick would be the M2. For right around that money, you're getting a pretty nice M2. You can get it either in a dual clutch or a six-speed manual transmission. A lot of people say that M2 is really the spiritual successor to the E46 M3, a true BMW M sports car. Uh, driven two series before and they're nimble, they're fun to drive in a great package. I think they look great. If I was going for the M2 or going for a BMW in the $60,000 sports car price range, I think I'd end up in an M2. You can get one brand new, spec it to whatever color you want. That would be a very, very good choice. The other German manufacturer we also have, Mercedes. So AMG definitely is what you're going to look into. I don't really consider the SL a sports car. That's more of a like a luxury GT coupe type of thing. So obviously AMG GTSs are still too expensive. Can't wait for those to come down in price. You have C63s, um, a used C63, a new one, a new brand new C63S coupe is definitely too expensive. They haven't come out. Those are eighty to hundred thousand dollars, pretty much. If you go used, you get a very, very nice like 2015 C63. You can't quite get a Black Series. I think those prices have gone up a little too high. But sixty grand gets you one with pretty low miles. Um, even if you go a little lower price, you get one of. I mean, great. I mean, you can get a very nice. Last gen Mercedes C63, which has that big old naturally aspirated V8, which sounds angry. I actually think it looks more aggressive, a little more evil, more anger looking than a new, more curvy uh, C Class design. But that, uh, one of the best sounding AMGs, those motors are long gone now, they're all twin turbocharged now. That is also a very good choice. It will be not as fast as some of the other options out there, it'll be very tail happy because all it does is burnouts, <laughs> but uh, still a lot of fun. So now moving on to the last main German manufacturer, we have Porsche, and they build some amazing vehicles. So 911s are, that's what Porsche stable is. That's the main sports car when you think about Porsche. Uh, 991s are newer again, so they cost a lot more. I don't think I've really seen uh, many 991s in this price range of $60,000. I've seen a couple, and they're usually not as great option ones and definitely really high miles. But now if you go down a generation to 997, those are still very new and your options are very wide. I think the most interesting part about it is you can look for either a Carrera S or a Turbo or Turbo S for pretty much the same price range. And the caveat there is the mileage. So if you're looking for just a Carrera S, which is a great car, that's a ton of performance, prestige, history, all around excellent Porsche engineered package, you can get a pretty low mile 997 for around 60, 60 grand right there. 
if you're willing to go a little bit more high mileage because you want something a little more exotic or faster, more performance oriented, a turbo, you can get a 997 turbo for that price range, but then you have to be okay with having higher miles. All over the entire range, there is a 911 for anybody out there, but I think it's really interesting that for 60 grand, you can get yourself a modern 911. Uh, you, yes, you can also go further back. Um, good luck finding like 993s, a like nice one for that money because those have all astronomically skyrocketed. 996s, yes, but I would focus myself personally on something in a 997 because you get more of that newer modern technology along with the performance. Another option from Porsche is a Boxster or a Cayman. So um, there, you can get a lightly used previous generation which still had the flat six Boxster or Cayman S. I mean, those are all right there. Or you can go spec yourself a brand new 718 that now is a turbocharged four cylinder. Some people might uh, be upset with the fact that it's now a four cylinder, but by all counts, it's a very, very good performance machine. Um, look at like best driver's car. They ranked it very, very highly. It makes a ton of power. But if you really, really want those cylinder counts, then you might want to go for a Boxster Cayman. Now that's a smaller, more nimble little Porsche sports car. Also a very good choice. Moving on to some other smaller European countries, if we can start with the British ones, uh, first thought that comes to mind is the Jaguars, uh, F-Type. I love those things. They look so unbelievably beautiful and they sound so, so awesome. So you get the F-Type V6S for sure you can get a good one for that price range. The V8, the R's haven't really come quite down to that price range yet in the $60,000 range. You might be able to find a first year like a V8S, which is before they went to the full 550. It's 495 horsepower, but so we get that really, really great V8 noise. But the V6, a lot of people say that might be the most balanced ones. I've driven both the V8 and the V6 versions. The V6S is, is like the middle good combination of the two of them because you get a little bit lighter. It feels a little more nimble. It's still plenty fast with 380 horsepower. Um, it sounds very, very good. Obviously, it looks drop dead gorgeous. The V8 is kind of adds more weight, obviously, a ton more power. It kind of turns it from a delicate tool to just like a sledgehammer to bludgeon corners in the depth. Um, so the Jag V6S, I, that's also a very, very good choice. Very appealing to me. Moving on, another British manufacturer, Lotus. You have Elise, Avora, Exceed, sort of. Now, Elise is kind of, those are getting kind of hard to get in America now because they no longer import them. Avoras are available. Those are more quirky, more unique. Uh, you don't see them as often. Definitely nimble little cars. They don't prioritize a ton of horsepower. It's more the driving experience, the way they handle. The biggest issue I see with that is actually the dealership network because they're such a small boutique manufacturer. You're not going to get many Lotus dealers all over the place to take care of them. But if you're looking for something more unique for 60 grand, that's also a ton of fun to drive and looks really nice and has some history to it, a Lotus would be a very good choice too. Moving on from Germany and Europe, um, England, we have, let's see, Alfa Romeo. You can get a 4C, 4C Spider, whatever. We, I recently just drove one. It was a ton of fun. It felt like a little go-kart. The sounds it made is really quick, actually. It looks like a baby Ferrari. It's got the Alpha name behind it. Uh, complaints of that one would be the interior will be very, very minimalistic and basic. It's not a very refined, comfortable vehicle. Also, if you're tall like I am, if you're over six feet, eh, it's not going to be comfortable. It's a little go-kart, but if that's what you're looking for, just the engaging, linear, raw driving experience, the Alpha 4C is a very hard package to beat. To wrap it up, for the European cars, we can kind of discuss, I mean, Maserati Gran Turismo. I don't really view that quite as a sports car, really. Also, there's a lot of factors that would hold me against buying one at $60,000, mainly reliability. Uh, also, like, you can get an old used Ferrari. But those aren't really what I'm thinking about talking to. Because if I'm going out to buy a car for sixty grand, I'd want something more modern. I want the most for my money. And if you're getting an older, there are some people that can be said. You want that and you feel passionate about a used uh, 355 or something like that, an old Ferrari. I personally don't think that would be the smartest decision um, if that's your like pure goal sports car right there. Moving on to America, the big three. We've got, let's start with Chevy. Chevy has a lot of really, really great products they offer in this price range. Start out with the Corvette. I think Matt Farah, I have a quote from him. I once heard him say uh, like something like, the best Corvette is the newest Corvette, the latest Corvette. And that's very true because the newest Corvette is going to be the fastest, latest technology, best build, all the stuff there. And the C7 is definitely true for this. You can get a C6 Z06 or a ZR1 maybe at that price range right around $60,000. But if you're looking for the comprehensive overall package, the C7 really does win. I mean, it's got, you can no longer criticize it for the interior because it's very nice. It no longer feels like cheap materials. Obviously, it drives very, very well. It's fast, so fast for the money. 
um, Grand Sports, like the new ones, that might be the good package right there. I don't know. If, I don't think Z06 has quite come down. Maybe they have. But if you're just talking just a C7 Stingray for 60 grand, that is a very, very good car for the money. Chevy doesn't stop with just a Stingray. They have more performance cars for money. The Camaro ZL1. That kind of pushes our $60,000 bubble a little bit, but I think it's cool enough and impressive enough that it's worth discussing. Not talking 1LE, just the regular ZL1, that supercharged Z06 engine, bringing in 650 horsepower. It is very, very fast, looks aggressive, mean, evil. Yeah, the, the ZL1, it, it's an amazing. It's not really, I don't want to really consider it a muscle car anymore. It's like a supercar slayer too. Um, so that's another really good offering from Chevy. Moving on from Chevy to Ford, we have pretty much only one thing that in my mind I think works for this $60,000 price uh, price range for the best sports car, the Shelby GT350. I don't think there is ever going to be a muscle car like the Shelby GT350 ever again. It, that flat plane crank V8, 5.2 liter naturally aspirated Voodoo, revs to 8200 RPM, six speed manual, rear wheel drive. I mean, everything is going to force induction now. They're going to dual clutch, automatic transmissions. That car won't ever be built again and it's so special. It's very, very fast. You can't quite get yourself into an R. They still command, first of all, the base price was higher. Uh, I believe right around, I've, I've optioned a couple of like right almost $70,000 and then there's still that stupid dealer markup. But a regular GT350 with the track pack, um, you can use it on a daily basis more so than an R car. Uh, and I mean, it has everything. The, the crazy engine, the way it looks, it sounds, the history of the Shelby name, that's from Ford, the GT350. Uh, Chrysler. They have the Hellcat, which is sort of a sports car, really. It's something that really wants straight line speed, so it has a lot of interior refinement. That's a comfortable vehicle, uh, but it's huge. It's a boat. It's massive. Uh, when you get in, you feel like you're sitting in a bathtub. But it also is absurdly fast. The Hellcat, for the money, where you can get one for 60 grand, 707 horsepower from the factory is quite an achievement for that money when you think about it. Uh, my complaints with that is I obviously won't handle as well. It doesn't feel as nimble as some of the other cars we talked about. But if you're looking for just a straight line rocket ship, if you want to mod it, whatever you want to do, the Hellcat is also a very, very cool choice. And that's why it's been so successful. Chrysler also has another product. Now we're kind of pushing the newer car rule, but it's cool enough to talk about like an 08 SRT10 Viper. So this is before, you can't get a newest gen Viper. I don't think I've seen a single one into the $60,000 price range, but you get yourself a pretty dang nice previous gen Viper, which, I mean, that was the car that like, when I was younger, it was like on posters. It was my desktop background. It was like on my phone. Actually, I didn't have a phone back then. But like when I played like PlayStation Gran Turismo, like racing around those Vipers, that's pretty cool. It might want to kill you. It might not be the most comfortable, probably least refined, but it's also very fast, has a massive V10. Um, it's gonna be looks gonna be very exotic. It's gonna look really cool. It's a freaking Viper. So for sixty grand, a used Viper would be very very interesting too. That kind of wraps up all the American ones I can think of right now. So move on. Last we have the Japanese. Now uh, we'll start off. We can talk about Toyota Lexus, the RCF. Um, RCF is definitely an. Intro oh wait wait. Two. Rewind. I missed something. Uh, American Cadillac ATS. ATS-V. Uh, also good. I mean, the platform has been very widely praised based on the Camaro. Same thing, the Alpha platform. I don't really like that V6 engine. Styling is uh. Um, but again, it's something that has to be discussed and you could go test, test drive one out. But I think personally, I would go for the German um, M4, those type of cars instead. Uh, where was I? Back to the Japanese. Yes. Lexus RCF. Same thing. Uh, kind of could be in the same segment as the ATS-V. One of the few ones you can still get a big old V8 naturally aspirated. Um, it looks polarizing. It's very Terminator in your face, aggressive looking type of thing with the big Lexus spindle grill. But yes, it sounds very good and it's pretty dang quick. Has some of that uh, Lexus Toyota reliability uh, reputation behind it too. And I think it's also very, it's a, it's a good choice. I don't think it would be my first one unless you really, really love the Japanese vehicles, the sports cars there. Obviously the V8 is one of the best parts of that car. And then the last one I can think of from Japan right now is the Nissan GTR. You can they've done a weird depreciation thing with the GTRs where really newer ones and like used ones of lower miles, like they've kind of sandwiched to this interesting value. But for 60 grand, you can get yourself one with it'll be a little bit towards the higher miles, uh, maybe an earlier year. But there's a reason they're so popular. A GTR has a ton of performance potential, has the history behind it, the handling. 
if you're looking for a roll racer, I mean, people make those very, very fast for not investing a massive amount of money. Even stock, they're impressive. You have to be prepared for a lot more uh, maintenance costs compared to some of the other cars there. Because again, remember, you might be buying a GTR for 60 grand, but brand new, that thing was an 80 to $100,000 vehicle, and you're still paying parts and labor and stuff on that. A lot of known issues with them, bell housing, transition type of stuff that you will probably have to take care of. But there's a huge community with the GTRs. I personally have a lot of friends who have them. Very impressive vehicles. And for 60 grand, could be an interesting sports car for you to pick. So there kind of rounds out the list of that I can think of that I kind of came up with all of them. If I had to pick right now, you gave me 60 grand, I know exactly what I'd buy. A Shelby GT350 track pack. I don't know what color I'd get, but again, like I said, you might be able to tell that like you won't, I don't think they're ever going to make a car like that again. And it's so special. I love that thing. It's like the iteration of my Boss 302 Laguna Seca, but just made better in every single way. That's what I'd pick for $60,000 for a sports car for myself to buy. Um, you could go German, Japanese, another one of the American ones. The Corvettes are definitely popular, 911s. There'll be some crazy guy who goes, I want a 65,000 mile R8 for 55 grand. Good luck. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys like this video. Definitely comment below. I want to hear the discussion. What would you buy for $60,000 and you're looking for a sports car? Now we're staying, trying to stay, let's just say, stay within like five grand of that price range right there. What sports car do you want to get? What do you think is the best for the money? Do you agree with all the cars I listed? Do you think a complete moron and none of the cars I listed make any sense? Let's discuss. Thanks for watching.